During 2023 config, Figma launched variables, which are like design tokens. We've looked at how we can use them with prototypes, but today we're going to look at how to use variables and specifically modes to just speed your designs by so, so much. And actually how we can cut down our design process where we create one template and from that we can just create an infinite amount of designs using modes. If you want, you can follow along with the file in the description box below. Let's jump in. In the file, you will find this kind of templatey screen over here. You might recognize it from some other videos that I use. We have a maybe search page or something like that that shows multiple products. And then over here, we've got the product details page. Now, the way we want to set this up is so I can have multiple different products here and then whatever product the user clicks on will be populated inside of here. Now, in the past, we would have needed to create four different designs to match up with each one of these products. But with variables and with variable modes, we don't need to do that. We just need to create a skeleton or a template once and then using the modes and using prototyping, we just connect the two. So let's have a look at our database. On the right of the file, you will find this kind of database setup. Now, basically, I've created this kind of table for myself showing for each of the products that I want, what is going to be the detail about them. You can see that I've set some of these as components. We'll look at that in a second, but let's look at the basic ones first. So for example, I've got the price here for every single one of these products. I've got the product name, I've got the color, and I've got the rating. What we can do now is just plug this into our variables first of all. So I'm going to click on my canvas. So I'm clicking on nothing, click over here on local variables, and I want to create one. But first of all, I want to name my collection. So I'm going to rename this shoe database. And this is going to be the database of all of the information on my different shoes. So let's start. I'll create my first variable. I'll call it a number and say price. And then I'll just add my modes straight away. So I've got four shoes. This is shoe one, shoe two, three, and four. Now I'll just populate it with the information I have beneath. So 173.01, 130.58, 186.5, 150.81. I'll continue and do this for my product name, color, and rating. Bear in mind that product name and color are going to be a string variable rather than a number variable. I'm going to do that now. I filled all of these out now. Please notice that I didn't do this for the default one. We'll do that separately. But for now, this is my database. I've got my four shoes and I've got the price, the product name, the color, and the rating for each of them. Now that these are all plugged in place, we can look at kind of the first one over here, which is just, you know, the basic variable connection, just to go over that. For example, I've got my price over here on this kind of just card, and it's set up in a way where the pound sign and the price are separate because whatever the variable is, it's going to populate the entire text box. So I can't just leave the pound sign there. And let's connect this one. We are looking for our variable sign, which will be next to the kind of text section in the design panel. I'll click on it and apply the price variable, for example. And that has now plugged in shoe number one. Okay. Now let's just look at how we change modes. First of all, before we get into the component stuff, when I click on this card over here, you can see that I have the variables button here now. I'm just going to show you if, for example, I'm just going to delete this text box. If I don't have that text box in there and I click on this card, we don't have that button. I can right click and connect my layer to a Boolean variable if I had one, but I don't have one now. So what made that difference? Command Z to bring the text box back. The reason we have this is because inside of this frame, there is something that is connected to a variable that has different modes. And we know that this text box is connected to the variable price, and we know that the variable price has different modes, okay? So once the frame detects that something inside of it is connected to a variable that has modes, you can then select this frame, what mode it belongs to. So if I click on this card over here and click over here, I can see in the shoe database, I can select which one it is. And I select auto right now, but I can say shoe two, and you see that changes, shoe four, shoe three, and it changes that variable to be connected to the mode. That's the basics of modes. We're using one variable and changing its mode to different ones. If you want to think of it like we think of components, it's like the different variants of one component. This is one variable with different modes. Now that we've sorted that out, let's have a look at this component. So we can't save images as different variables. The way around this is putting them inside of a component and then using a string variable to kind of choose which variant of that component we're using. 
it makes a lot more sense when you actually see it in practice. So over here, I've got a component called shoe image. It's a component set, which means I've got different variants inside of it. So I have one called default, shoe one, shoe two, shoe three, and shoe four. And you can see over here, if I just open up the values, you see that the property that differentiates between them is shoe, and then the values are shoe one, two, three, and four. So that's how they're named. I want to create a local variable, another one inside of my shoe database that is a string variable, and I'm going to call it image. Now I'm going to name them the same way that the variants are named. So basically this name over here matches exactly to the name of the variant of the first image. So this matches with this, this matches with this, this matches with this. Now over here in my card, I'm using an instance of that component shoe image. And over here, just like normal, we are used to it where we can choose which variant we're using. But now we have the variable button. If I click on that, I can assign it to this kind of image string that we've created. And because the names match up exactly, once we assign it to that variable, it will just populate it and change it to that variant. Now, if we click on our card and go over here to this mode selection, we can change the variable mode to, let's say, shoe number two. And that price will change and the image will change shoe number four, shoe number three, etc. Please note that in order for this to work properly on the actual component of the shoe image, we also have this mode button. This one needs to be set to automatic, which means it's gonna take on whatever its parent is using. If we were to choose something here, let's say I said this one is shoe number one, then even if the card is set to shoe number three, that image is still gonna be set to shoe number one, okay? So the actual instance needs to be set to automatic, which means it will take on whatever mode its parent is using. Okay, so again, I'm choosing my parent and selecting the different modes from over here. So we've got that done for the card. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this card over. So I'm gonna Command C and then replace all of these. So select my kind of skeleton cards and Command Shift R to paste to replace. And I'm gonna set it so this one is shoe number one, shoe number two, this one is shoe number three, and this one is shoe number four. So that's already one way where modes are so, so helpful. We just create this inside of the database and then make the card once, put it in however many times we need, and just set it to different modes to populate it with different content. Now let's see how we can take this one step further and populate this details card according to this. So remember all of this default information? I wanna store this default information in a separate collection. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into my local variables and then just create another collection and I'm gonna call it current shoe. In this one, I'm gonna put all the just default data, which is this kind of skeleton-y information. So I've now populated these new variables in my new collection current shoe. And you see that they're the same that we had before. We have an image, price, product name, rating, and color. This time I put the word current before them to help me out. The reason this is in a separate collection is because this collection doesn't need modes, right? There's only gonna be one shoe that we're looking at at a time. We're not gonna be looking at different shoes at the same time. And what we're gonna do is these values are just kind of dummy values for now. And once we click on one of the shoes from here, we're going to change all of these values to the variable that's connected to them in the correct mode. So if we're clicking on shoe number three, all of these will be connected to the information about shoe number three or shoe number four or shoe number one. Again, this will be much simpler when you actually see it in practice. Firstly, let's connect all of the kind of items on our product details page to these variables. So I'll look over here at the image first of all, which we know is an instance and I'll connect it instead of two variables from shoe database like before, I'm connecting it to the general current one. So I'm looking at current image. Ooh, so you see what happened now? I've got something, it's telling me variable value doesn't map to the variant. So I guess I have a spelling mistake because what I put in, let's see, I put in default, but how is it called? Maybe it's called something else. So this one is called default, but see the problem. So Figma is telling me you tried to connect it, but I can't find this. Yeah. So this is why, because I don't know how to spell default. Now it's fine. Let's connect price next. So I'm connecting price from over here. And again, I'm connecting it to current price. I'm connecting the product name to current product name. There we go. And now I'm connecting the rating. We didn't do this before. We are connecting it through here to current rating. Great, that worked fine. And color last, I'm connecting over here to current color. Now we wanna set it up so every time the user clicks on this card, for example, it goes to this page, but it's populated with shoe number one information. Let's do that. Clicking on my card, going into prototype and adding an interaction. 
So what we want to do is we want to set a variable, right? So I want to set, for example, current price. It's set to zero right now, right? Instead of that, I want to set it to price from the shoe database, right? So if we look at our variables for a second, I'm setting it up. So current shoe, so the price in current shoe, which is right now just set to a number to zero, will be changed with this price over here and we can see that when we're setting that up i'll go back into prototype and click on this when i'm going to price it tells me that the price is 173 yeah and this is because it already knows that it's in mode of shoe one if i did this from this shoe for example you will see that when i say set variable price you see that's a different price it says 130.58 because it recognizes what mode it's in i'll go back to this shoe over here and just continue setting this one up. So we set current price to price and we need to keep doing that for all the others. So we're setting the variable current image to image, current name with product name, current rating with rating, current color with color. Yeah. So we're setting it up. So for every single one of the items inside of this page, we're replacing their content with the correct content. And then lastly, we're going to navigate to selected shoe over here and then just make it dissolve. And I've already got it set up that it goes back as well. Let's just run this to see that it's fine. I'm going to click on my frame and shift and space to open this up over here. Let's have a look. So I've got all of my different shoes up here. And when I click on shoe number one, it sends me to the product details page and it's populated it with the correct information. Okay, so this is this page and this page are the same thing. How crazy is that? So it took on the right image because it told this component to change to the correct variant. It told the price, what number it should be, what the product is, how many stars are in the rating and also what color it is. Let's set this up for the other ones as well. Now again, we don't need to do this all over. I'm gonna click on my card and click on the interaction. So just tap right next to it until it becomes blue and then copy, so command C. I'm gonna click on my other cards and just paste and that will paste that in, which means that now clicking on my frame shift space, any card that I click on, it will now populate with the correct information. Isn't that just crazy? Look at that. So I could just go in between and again, yeah, it took a bit of pre-preparation, but I just created four different designs with one design. Yeah, I just created it once. I created an empty template, a skeleton, however you want to call it. And I'm populating it using my variables and my different modes. So that was the quick overview to show you how you can really make magic with modes. You can create a design once and then using variables populated in many, many, many different ways. You can also do this with colors and booleans and set up really funky environments. If you have a few different brands that use the same design, you can set up the different brands in the variable mode and then just call out to them when necessary. So you can really do so, 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 so much with this. And I know there's a lot more coming. There's a few different things within modes or within variables in general where it says coming soon on them. So I just can't wait to see what comes up next. Please let me know if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. Let me know what else you want to see videos about. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one.